morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are in week 14 of the uh, history of the British family and uh, today I'd like to talk with you about uh, leisure activities and uh, holidays, sports and other pleasures in the Victorian society. Uh, again, it's going to be based on the book by Sally Mitchell, Daily Life in Victorian England. Uh, she gives an entire long chapter um, about leisure and pleasure. So if you want more, uh, because well, we just uh, have enough time to hint these things and not to explore them in, in great detail, but if you want more, uh, I strongly encourage you to, um, to read this book. Uh, so, um, why is leisure and pre pleasure uh, important uh, to uh, understanding private life and family life uh, in the Victorian uh, society? Uh, well, it's the beginning of what you might call the modern life, the modern society, and uh, also the modern way that uh, um, recreation is uh, organized. Uh, uh, many things change, or at least uh, the changes are uh, very visible uh, in the um, in the social life, um, and they change towards uh, what we can understand as modern. So, um, of course, uh, there were many ways in which the Victorians spent their free time, uh, but uh, some of them are quite modern. So the they are connected with uh, city life, uh, especially the, the public entertainments uh, grow. Uh, there are new ways of um, popular holiday making, something that we are going to discuss today, especially the seaside holidays, which do not uh, originate from Victorian culture but really um, become a social institution in the uh, in the Victorian culture and also uh, some ways of celebrating traditional holidays especially Christmas what people now understand as traditional Christmas especially in the British context is uh, by and large Victorian uh, so the traditions connected with traditional Christmas celebration do not normally go further than, um, than the 19th century. Uh, so we'll talk about them. Uh, of course, this is, uh, this is all the um, result of uh, those overarching dramatic changes uh, in technology, especially the railways. So um, for example, uh, more and more people from uh, broader sections of the uh, of the society could go could afford to go um, on holidays uh, to the seashore by railways. Uh, we have um, growing urbanization, so the city lifestyle is becoming dominant. Uh, growing commercialization of life, people uh, have more and more things uh, available to buy. Uh, also, things like sports become more organized, professionalized, commercialized uh, and um, also industrialization, especially in a way that uh, um, the pattern of holidays, the pattern of leisure is increasingly integrated into uh, the pattern of work. So, um, of course, if people work in, uh, in the uh, fields in the country, they didn't have any free time uh, during the summer, but uh, in the industry and all kinds of city professions, uh, this was uh, well integrated into the pattern of work. So, if you signed a work contract, it included information about the, uh, the amount of uh, free time you got and uh, uh, it um, uh, influenced the, the kind of um, uh, recreations that uh, that you might uh, choose. So um, uh, definitely, uh, many times, uh, many types of traditional celebrations, folk uh, uh, customs, uh, local uh, holidays, local. Um, traditions were going 
out of use. The British uh, uh, society and culture were becoming unified, uh, mostly thanks to the railways. So all the uh, rituals like the May Day or um, uh, some folk customs uh, connected with the Christian uh, uh, holidays were quickly going out of use. Uh, if we look at Christmas, I told you that uh, most of the traditional understanding of Christmas nowadays is largely Victorian. Uh, actually, you can, uh, uh, you can find uh, quite a lot of materials online, especially short videos of uh, how to make traditional Christmas in terms of uh, food and decorations and presents and, and um, all these things and they mostly go to the 19th century. Uh, it doesn't mean that all those uh, traditional um, things like the Christmas tree uh, originate from the 19th century but especially in the British context they were popularized by uh, by the Victorian society and in this case in case of the Christmas tree by the royal family themselves so um, uh, during the uh, the time around Christmas uh, Queen Victoria and Prince Albert whenever they visited uh, an institution like the hospital or army garrison or school or anything they did a lot of such uh, official entertaining uh, so if it was around Christmas, they would bring the Christmas tree as a present, as a kind of token of, uh, of uh, um, royal favor uh, to be displayed in, uh, in the institution they, uh, they visited. Also, the illustrated press uh, popularized this custom. This was a German custom. It was uh, known... Uh, among the families with German connections, so uh, the, uh, the royal family as well. But uh, in the middle of the 19th century, it really became ubiquitous. People started to emulate the royal family in many aspects, so anything they could afford really. And uh, celebrating Christmas, uh, um, including some uh, otherwise unknown traditions uh, like uh, like Christmas tree decorations uh, uh, became very fashionable. So uh, two things about Christmas in the 19th century go rapidly out of fashion and two go rapidly into fashion. Uh, the two aspects of Christmas that go out of cultural use are uh, the community aspect and paradoxically, the, re the religious aspect. Uh, before the 19th century, um, much of the focus of Christmas celebration was on church observance, on, uh, um, on all kinds of religious ceremonies. Now it's reduced very much. There is some caroling, so choral singing and uh, uh, and such uh, entertainments, but uh, you do not really have uh, long church services and very solemn celebrations that were quite typical for the Protestant religion before the, uh, the Victorian period. Another aspect of Christmas that goes out of fashion is the community aspect, uh, the neighborhood aspect. So visiting neighbors, uh, sharing food and especially sharing drink together, um, also, folk uh, customs such as so-called mama's place, so people dressing up and um, uh, visiting the neighborhood, uh, merrymaking, singing, and sometimes even uh, doing all kinds of amateur theatrics. Uh, um, so uh, this was an old folk custom practically obsolete in the Victorian period. Nowadays, actually, some of these folk customs are going, uh, are coming back. They, uh, the local people try to revive them as some sort of local point of interest. But in the, in the Victorian period, uh, the general um, concept of British culture was towards unification and not towards uh, preserving any local customs so um, you don't uh, you don't have it uh, the uh, two aspects that would go 
into uh, fashion and become much more important is the focus on uh, family, especially family meals and uh, family um, gatherings, uh, including children. And this, this becomes a kind of children's holiday, um, Christmas. Uh, plus uh, commercialization. So uh, buying things rather than making things, buying decorations, buying Christmas tree ornaments, buying presents for children. So if we have um, so much focus on the family and, uh, and gift giving, uh, of course uh, this um, strengthens uh, uh, the entire branches of industry producing toys and other uh, things that could be used uh, as presents. So mostly presents are bought rather than made. Until, uh, unless you are uh, a child, let's say, or a teenager, so then you might make some handicrafts and, uh, and give them to your family members as, uh, as uh, gifts. But uh, uh, the whole idea is um, towards uh, much more commercialization. A new custom connected with that is uh, sending postcards. This is a completely new Victorian invention. Uh, generally, uh, the postal system was revolutionized uh, uh, mostly by introduction of uh, stamps. So um, introducing the system in which uh, the person who sent the letter paid for the, uh, for the letter rather than the person who received it as it was uh, before. So you could uh, actually deny uh, the letter and uh, never get it if you did not have the money. So uh, now um, you paid when you were sending the letter and uh, there were all kinds of cheap ways of doing that. For example, using the postcard. So uh, not a, a longer letter in an envelope, but uh, a decorative short message with a printed image on one side and in the middle of the 19th century um, Christmas becomes a, a very popular occasion to send postcards uh, so we have um, this uh, a new commercial um, custom uh, so uh, that's uh, that's about Christmas this is perhaps the most uh, Victorian type of holiday uh, that uh, that is. Uh, this is um, connected with uh, uh, with visiting. Uh, of course, uh, many of the customs are different in Britain. Have been different in Britain uh, than uh, what you may know from Poland. So, for example, you might ask yourself. Um, what uh, typical foods would be, uh, of course, if you remember your Dickens and the uh, Christmas Carol by Dickens, you know uh, that the Victorians would, would mostly eat uh, uh, eat birds, so uh, turkey or goose or something like that. Uh, this this uh, uh, was a traditional uh, meal for uh, a traditional dish for for Christmas. Uh, Dinner, the most important meal was Christmas dinner on Christmas Day uh, rather than uh, Christmas Eve celebration. They don't really have it in, uh, in Britain. Uh, also, some older traditional uh, recipes like um, the, the Christmas pudding, but uh, um, the majority uh, was not that really that old, so um, that's one thing. Uh, and when the, the gifts were given, this is also something that changes in the, in the Victorian period because traditionally uh, the moment to exchange presents was um, New Year's Day or the Feast of um, Epiphany, so the 6th of, uh, of January. In the Victorian period, uh, with the popularization of the Christmas tree, it becomes um, typical to arrange the presents around the Christmas tree so that the children would find them uh, in the morning of Christmas Day. So we have uh, uh, this new custom, uh, also uh, a new um, legend or new fantastical uh, story about Father Christmas or Santa Claus, uh, the figure who would distribute those presents. They didn't really know that before. Uh, they had completely uh, different plant symbols like mistletoe or holly. 
um, now it's all dominated uh, mostly by um, by the Christmas tree. So that's one big difference in the way that uh, um, celebrations uh, happen in the in the Victorian culture. And uh, in next part we move to other aspects.